Hi friends, this is Carmen. Welcome back to my channel. And if it's your first time here, welcome. I've got a special video for you today. I'm bringing you my spring balcony tour today. I've been cleaning up the balcony and adding some new plants. And I'm so excited to share with you everything that's growing out there. So stay tuned and we'll get to it. So as you come out my patio door, you see Rosie, <laughs> and here is my patio. I love it. It is very, very large. Um, I haven't actually taken a measurement of it, but I do believe it's probably 12 by 12, something like that. I mean, it's larger than my last one and probably larger than most bedrooms. So um, here it is. I've been cleaning as I said but you know I can't stop the birds from coming and I can't stop the wind from happening um, so it is what it is so let's start off over here to the right um, I have a little trash can there here is where I keep most of my at least smaller aloes and smaller Haworthias a lot of them you've seen already before my Haworthia limifolia Worthia zebra, some aloes here, my aloe um, firebird, and my aloe juvena, Ju Ju I think it is, yeah, juvena, climbing aloe, which is really growing. It used to be a lot shorter when I first got it about, oh, four or five months ago. And this one I think may still be dormant my aloe estrada it's not been rooting it's still just hanging out so i'm hoping now in the springtime it'll take some root and this here is a grape velt um it's not a very common plant but it is a um, trailing plant as you can see, it's starting to trail there just a little bit, but I've had this forever and it's gone through a lot and it seems to be surviving. Um, Aloe Snowstorm, which isn't looking its happiest, so I'm hoping the spring will help. Aloe Blush, its pup is growing nicely, and I think, yeah, it has another one down here. So that's doing nice, nice blush color to it. Coral Fire, my Aloe Coral Fire. Has a nice pup there. This is a Swarthy, and I always struggle with this name. Coaratata. <laughs> okay, but it's a really cool um, Hawarthia and the growth structure of it. And down here is my Aloe Starry Night, one of my newer aloes to my collection. And this is Echinopsis. Uh, Echinopsis caterpillar down here and um, Mammillary Langata Copper King, one of my favorites. My Aloe Blizzard. This is an agave pup that my mom gave me that she had gotten off the side of the road or something like that. I don't know what type of agave it is. I need to do some more research on that. Now this one here you probably remember that I've talked to you a little bit about this is my euphorbia amic variegated and this is the larger one I have the smaller one inside that you probably saw in my living room uh, tour and I thought that it looks so much like underwater coral or something you would find under the water that I put some of my mermaid fairies under here I did one time a fairy garden that was a underwater theme and I had these mermaids and this little fish I think I found it at a thrift store so I put those here to kind of fill up the pot I really like that underneath here is an aloe that my mom just gave me some cuttings of and I don't know she didn't know either the name of it so I need to do some more research on that Here's the pickle plant, and it's growing kind of funny, <laughs> but it's growing, so um, 
I put it here so I could get some dappled light and see if it does a little bit more growing because I had it over there and it was not getting hardly any light. And above here, I have my two old guys, old man cactus, my peanut cactus that these are actually all cuttings. The original um, peanut cactus got root rot, so I cut it up and repotted the cuttings and it's grown all these little stems. I'm really, really hoping that um, she blooms this year. This is a um, rose quartz flower, beautiful hot pink flower. And this Puntia here is a Puntia Quimilo. Really cool, really super easy to propagate. This one here and this one back here are, I guess you could say brothers because they came from the same mother plant and I propagated well, more pine needles. That pine tree is my nemesis. So um, basically you just snap off one of the pads and put it in the soil and it'll root. So this one back here came from that. I think this is the original and the other one came from this one. Now this is the Monocartha, Hopuntia Monocartha Monstros. This one came off of this one right here. See that? This has grown so much. I love, love the redness on it. it looks like it's getting a bloom there. That means it's growing. Again, these opuntias are so easy to propagate. You just take one of these little pads off and pop it in there and it'll grow. But I've had this, you can tell down there by the uh, trunk of it, I've had it a long time, about four years, which is a long time in plant life. <laughs> and um, it's doing great love these in the spring because of the coloring that they get and the variegation that they have oh almost forgot this one up here is a new addition this is a um, annual that blooms these little red blossoms this is um i have the tag down here this is baby sun rose red apple and it takes full sun um it is an annual so i just put it there for the uh coloring and to add some a basket to it there now i did have a couple left oh. hi rosie what are you doing down here are you checking out the new plants getting yourself dirty so i had two more plugs of them and i just put them in here and i will tell you that i did pop in here some seeds of um dwarf uh, sunflowers. I put some in another pot and I had some left over and I just popped them in here to see if they'll take. So I do plan on putting some other stuff in this pot too. And this is my one of my favorite aloes. This is the Aloe Crosby's Prolific. I just repotted this this week. This is a brand new pot. I like these smooth ones. And I put it in some fresh soil with some fresh nutrients in it. And because it had been in its smaller six inch pot for a good three years and it was busting out of it. So I put it in this eight inch and uh, took some of the dead leaves off, cleaned it up, so give it some room to grow. But this Crosby's Prolific did a wonderful over the winter. It's gonna have a great spring and summer. Now, here's another aloe that you guys love. This is the Aloe Purple People Eater. I think I had shown you this once before. And it's got these growths on it. I think it's trying to get a flower. I'm not sure. It's really strange. <laughs> here's another one. But it's doing great. I repotted this one too from its original nursery container into this 8-inch pot and gave it some fresh nutrient soil and it's loving it nice big pot for it to grow into but not too big because that can be damaging to the plant too you guys remember this baby 
from one of my last hauls. I think it was from my birthday haul. This is the Ceres Pluvianus Mon Monstrosa. And Monstrosa because of the growths on it. But I think these are going to be some nice arms. I don't know if it's going to be really you know, monstrous or crested. I think those are going to be some nice arms on it. It's doing great. It is in the tank screen stuff. Cacti and succulent mix, which is a little bit chunkier than this one. This one is my mix. That's not as chunky, but still very, very fast draining. Here I have a mix of different mammillarias. I think this is a Elongata Ladyfingers. Truly, I'm not sure what these are. So, if anybody out there knows if these are mammillarias or echinopsis, let me know. I just kind of popped them together into this terracotta pot so they, they wouldn't be lonely. Now this, I did have the tag. I need to find it. This was sent to me by my subscriber, Debbie as little cuttings no roots but now they are rooted and growing very nicely but i can't find the tag so i'm gonna have to look back in one of the videos and see what i what it was that'll be the only way that i can really identify it and here i have um what's left of my euphoria trigona it had two other ones that were lost to root rot and this is a surviving baby. It's doing good. It's got some nice pink up here at the top. So we can get it to, that means it's growing. So that's good. So next to that, I have this pot of various um, sedums and jade plants and aloes, all different kinds. And this is actually, I had this pot empty this 10 inch pot and I wanted to get one of those you know decor and drop you know they're already mixed together already um, decorated and you just drop it in here but they were $26 and then I saw this hanging basket I've taken off the little hangers then I saw this hanging basket that looked exactly the same and it was $19 so I took brought that one took it off and popped it in this see if I can get it out. I don't think I can get it out one-handed, but it's a hanging basket. Trust me. And it, it was, you know, like $7 cheaper. And I love, love the colors. on it. I don't know the name of all of these. Like, I know that's a jade. I know these, that's a firestorm, I believe. See them, firestorm. But they have these beautiful flowers and beautiful blooms that'll be coming out and I put it here next to the um, balcony wall so I'm trying to attract um, hummingbirds to the balcony so hopefully they'll come and see these along with some other ones that I'm going to show you here in a minute but that, I thought that was a good deal here is my baby my Sirius for best CI spiralis and my blue one, the blue columnar cactus, Mexican fence post cactus, the Euphorbia medusa, which is starting to come out of dormancy there. It's starting to get some new growth. I'm hoping that the little yellow flowers, now that the weather's getting nice and warm, that they'll come out. That's the Euphorbia medusa. Just underneath, I have a couple of this colander I've had forever and some fairies here, but I just kind of popped in some plants that were in another container that weren't doing well, the bunny ear cactus and thimble cactus, and just put them underneath here, and hopefully they'll recover, which it looks like they are. But this little colander is kind of a catch-all of little cactus that aren't doing well. Now here I have now I have two pots of dragon fruit. This was the original one. I think I showed you before, it was nice and long. And then it had some damage of water and sun. 
which I just repotted it this morning to look at the roots to see if I needed to throw these pieces away and I don't need to. Rosie's inspecting my work. <laughs> um, so I just took off the damaged part, repotted the two. These are two main cuttings that were given to me without any roots. They rooted and they gave off all of these arms. So I put those in that terracotta pot and the other arms in this one so they can start a new pot. Some of them are rooted, some of them are not, but they'll do great here. Dragon fruit is another cacti type of plant that um, is super easy to propagate and grows very fast. So I have my totem pole cactus here. Look how big that's getting. Isn't that beautiful? This is the original arm right there. It grew this one and this one. This is the one that I had knocked off and I just popped it back in. It's growing. It's rooted and it's growing. So I'm filling up the pot there, which is nice. It's my Kalanchoe pink butterflies, which this one has been through issues, let's say. Look how long and scraggly it is. But she's starting to get pink. And I'm going to let her just do her thing. Sometimes that's just what you have to do with a plant. Just let it do its thing. Okay, then here in the front, I have this columnar type of cactus. This is a San Pedro cactus. And I think I've talked to you about this one before. This is the original cacti. This is the top portion that used to be right here. And I cut it off, let it callus over about four days and potted it up here. And it's been growing because it was right about here where my hand is. So it's grown a lot. And since then also the original piece has grown this arm which now I'm thinking that to fill in this pot, I am thinking my next project with this one is to take this arm and cut here, the top of this one, and plant both of those here. That will um, tell the, these plants, say hey, I gotta grow another arm. So this one will grow another arm and this one will grow an arm. So I think that's what I'm going to do in my next project with the San Pedro. This used to be my mom's originally. So another easy cactus to propagate. So back here, this is my Kalanchoe beharensis, tiny plant that I cut because it was um, a clearance plant that had root rot and I cut the roots off and let the stump callus over and I potted it up now it's doing great look at all the new growth on it that's a little bit of damage from the original plant you can see the lighter color is all new growth it's my euphorbia pseudocactus zigzag or pseudocactus I don't know if you can see but it's starting to get little red bumps on it those are blooms that it's starting to get so it's grown I don't know, about five, six inches since I've had it. It's my Kalanchoe Copper Spoons. It's grown a lot. Look at all that new growth. The new growth comes in a little bit greener and then turns the copper. And next to that is this Kalanchoe uh, Marmorata. It's a hybrid. I remember having trouble trying to identify this one, but look at the growth structure on them. That's why the reason I got it is the growth structure, these leaves, need to clean it up a little bit. Take some of those dead leaves off, but the coloring on it, the um, stress on it from the sun gives it that nice pink tinge. And this is my aloe macrosiphon. Siphon? And it's getting bigger. You can see it's starting to need a little bit more room to the sides. And its pup is getting bigger. I don't see a new pup, but definitely the one that I bought it with is getting bigger. I've had this about nine months. 
Now these on top here are my blooming plants that I got basically to try and attract um, hummingbirds. This one here I've had for a while. This is my aloe partridge breast and it has a couple of pups. Actually, yeah, two pups on this side that are growing nicely, but every year it gives me this just beautiful bloom. It's just starting to open. So I put it up here with these other blooming plants, hoping that, again, it'll attract the hummingbirds and butterflies. You probably remember these from my last plant haul. Euphorbia millii, my crown of thorns. These are popular with the butterflies and this salvia autumn sage is very popular with the hummingbirds. And back here, my original uh, aloe vera and my frog, Mr. Frog. And um, she's doing really well. I keep hoping every year that it'll bloom for me and it doesn't, so we'll see. And now in this pot, I have my Tritoscantia purple heart. In here, I did scatter also some seeds of the uh, echinacea, the purple flower echinacea. I thought that would look cool in there, so we'll see if they take and if they grow. Here, my Eve's Needle Monstros. You remember this from my weird cactus video. Madagascar Palm growing nice and tall this is a slow grower though I've had this two years it did give off a pop in that two years but it's it's a slow grower does great outdoor in the winter time at least in uh, zone 9 10 it does and another monstrous plant Sirius Perianus monstros and you'll notice all over I just kind of pop in my little fairy garden <laughs> furniture and people just to fill in the pots <sighs> more pine needles and here's a little pup of it that broke off and I just pot it back in there but I love this one it's beautiful and this is my um, euphorbia trigona rubra and coming out of winter Got a little bit of winter cold damage, but it did okay. It's going to do great and grow some more this spring. And here is um, another blooming plant that I just got. This is a Santa Cruz lilac hibiscus. It's blooming it already. This one's dying off. This one's about to open. This one just opened. And I put my little gnomes in here berries and then I forget what these are called but these are little spring flowers and they had a six pack of them at um, Home Depot that I picked up and in here I scattered some uh, seeds of the dwarf sunflowers so we'll see if those if those grow and here is another fairy garden put some snapdragons in here that are blooming some more of those little white flowers my little duck pond my little teapot cottage with a uh, oh the birds must have been in here and my little gnome so I love doing those little fairy gardens with blooming plants in them okay so let's go over here to the shelf before and do the hanging plants. This one you probably know and remember, this is my um, Portugal Car Afra trailing. And it lost a lot of little leaves during the winter cold, but it's coming back. It's starting to get a lot of new leaves and even longer. I really need to measure this. I think it's about four feet long. Here is my Rick Rack cactus or fishbone and this one used to be longer but those smaller ones I are, are cuttings that I took off the long stem and put them back in here to root and fill in the pot 
And this is my funky Kalinkoe fang that is hanging out of its pot. I moved it up here to this top shelf of the uh, shelving unit to give it some room because it, it's such an odd shape. It really takes up a lot of room, but it's growing. So looks like I need to clean it up with some dead leaves. Then on the next shelf, I've got my Gasteria Little Warty. These are um, a cutting that's growing now of my Sensiveri Laurentii that I took last year of leaf cutting. Looks like this is, this one's dead. I need to take that out, but this one's growing off of this one. And my Cresselovada Lemon Lime. Uh, domino Cactus in a toilet bowl cup. <laughs> and here's another one of those Thimble Cactus. Really, really cute. They're very fragile. In fact, its name is Mammillaria gracilis, like graceful, you know, fragile. Because these little arms fall off very easily. Now these little ones here in these tiny pots are um, Sempervivums that were on um, Christmas ornaments. And after Christmas, I took them off and potted them up here, waiting for them to really wake up. And this also is a little, I don't know if this is going to survive, a little Echeveria that was a Christmas ornament. And ox tongue or Gasteria glom glomerata. But an ox tongue, it's got really rough leaves. My Echeveria raindrop, you can see the bumps on there. The raindrops and another portrait of carafa variegated this is my um, elephant bush bonsai tree and it's growing a lot of new growth a lot of new leaves because it did lose a lot which is normal in the winter time my kalinkoe paddle plant i think it's kalinkoe lucii or lucie it's got some new growth in there and a little tiny pup down here. And my Ming thing, I think this is a serious, serious type. Not serious as in serious, but this type of serious, serious Rubesii monstros. <laughs> and it's called Ming thing. Very cool. This is what's left of the cuttings I have of my orchid cactus. Uh, there was a second one that died. This one got heavily damaged at the tip, cut it off, and it seems to be hanging in there. There's been no more damage or death to it. So I'm hoping in the spring it'll sprout off another growth of that. And this is my Echeveria crinoline ruffles. Isn't that pretty? Look at those. It's um, getting elongated a little bit. I think that I may cut it, behead it, if it does grow any bigger so that way I can repot the top portion and then new growth will start at this bottom stem. But I want to see if it uh, keeps stretching out like that, but it's beautiful. Down yeah. here I have my Euphorbia Pelagona Snowflake. Not much growth to it right now, but I think it will be coming out of dormancy soon. Here's another bunny ear cactus. Another Echinopsis back there. I used to have that one hanging because of the growth structure, but I put it down here. This is my Sansevieria uh, stuckii. And there is new growth coming out of it. Right there. So it's waking up. Sorry about that. And these are cuttings from my aloe that I'm um, rooting for my daughter because the aloe that I gave her died and she wants to try again because she thinks she knows what she did wrong. <laughs> so I'm rooting some more for her. And then over here on the table, I've got some more flowering annuals. You remember these pots that I got at Goodwill? So I got these little red snapdragons to put in them. 
some of them are still in bud but I thought that would be a nice color especially next to this uh, Euphorbia Lactea Cristata that's grafted on here the purple coloring of it along with this I thought it would be really pretty then back there it's just storage pots buckets you know all that sort of stuff up here I've got my wind chimes but here is another trailing Portulacara Afra these were cuttings from that one over there that I popped into this terracotta pot and it just started growing and trailing and there you go and my uh, Cedar Morgani Morganium donkey's tail now in this bird cage I've had this a long time I've had different um, trailing plants planted in this I even took that apart and used this for Kristen's wedding as a decor so this has been around a while but right now I have a geranium see that a red very small red geranium in there that's growing I'm not sure if it's real visible but I thought it was a cute idea and my string of buttons it's very happy since I repotted it cotyledon pendants doing really well lots and lots of new growth nice little red edges and then I forgot to show you I do have I do have this um, hummingbird feeder here and I don't know how often the hummingbirds come here but I have seen some pigeons here so <laughs> I don't know so there you have it friends and Rosie loves loves it out here she comes out here every morning after we go for a walk first thing I do is open the patio door and she comes out here and uh, sniffs around bathes in the Sun at least for now she won't be doing that come July and she loves it out here and I do too I love sitting out here and I do have lights on the umbrella so when it is open at night the little lights come on but right now I have it open or excuse me closed so the plants can get morning sun which is real nice right now and then also in a couple of days I saw the forecast we're going to be getting rain so I have it watered these that are on the outside of the balcony I did not water because we're going to be getting rain so I don't want to give them too much water so I'm really anxious to see how the plants grow and bloom in the springtime and into the summer I will keep you updated on that let me know what you think friends down below in the comments I'm loving it I'm happy the way that it's turning out and I will see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video please friends do give it a like I appreciate that see you in the next video have a blessed day